Hello, in this video I want to show how to analyze a cantilever beam under a point load and it's some extra information to go along with this book. So here's what I'm going to discuss in this video. I'm going to discuss a cantilever beam, I'm going to analyze it by hand and then I'm going to check the results with help of SolidWorks simulation. So here you have two examples of cantilever beams. In this case, if you have a, a beam that can be used in lifting, you can analyze both sides as a cantilever beam and here you have a, another very nice example of a situation in which you would analyze the situation as a cantilever beam on a point load it's a, a house in Amsterdam with a, a beam that begin they can be used to lift heavy loads like a piano and when you would analyze this you can almost ignore the weight of this beam itself and that's why it's a good uh, a good situation to use the analysis of a cantilever beam on a point load so I'm going to analyze it with beam elements and you see the advantage of this. I will get a moment graph inside SOLIDWORKS. That's nice. If you don't use beams but shells or solid elements, then you won't get this moment graph. So whenever possible, you should use beams because it's also the fastest way of analyzing it. So here's what I'm going to analyze. I'm going to analyze a HE100 profile. You can see the dimensions over here under a force load of a thousand Newton. And before you start the analysis, it's always good to think whether or not this is going to hold the load or not. So for me, a load of 100 kilogram uh, seems like it's, it should be possible to be held by this beam with this format made of, of steel. So always whenever analysing a beam or any other structure, it's good to uh, cut away a lot of the structure and see in that way uh, which forces and moments are playing inside the beam. So it's always possible to just virtually erase a part of a structure and replace that part of a structure with the force arrow and the moment arrow. If you do that and you do it correctly, it should give you insight in your situation and also in the moments that are playing inside the, the beam. So this is the best way to do a thought experiment for yourself, supported with help of images. Here you see a, a preview of chapter 14 of this book. It's a more way of showing how the moment leads to very high stresses in a, inside a beam. Uh, here I've done the integration of calculating the moment. You, you see uh, how it's done over here, but you don't need to do that. That's the warning message here on the yellow note here, the yellow sticky note. Whenever using the area mo moment of inertia, this integration is already done for you. So you don't need to do it yourself. But in this image, you see that this force has to be compensated by high stresses to stop the beam from rotating, to, to uh, get an equilibrium in moments. So that's important to realize. You, you shouldn't do this integration yourself because when using the moment of inertia formula that I'm going to use later, this integration is already performed for you. So here I've done uh, the shear and moment diagrams of this beam and whenever you look at this beam over here and you create a virtual cut you can see that the moment will increase with the distance and the shear force will be constant over the whole length because uh, you, you can see it by looking at this force the internal force and the reaction moment. This moment over here has to be bigger than a moment over here because it also has to compensate for this force over this distance and you, you can already see then that the moment will increase when going from right to left in this beam so this is the shear and moment diagram for this situation and I will check that with SOLIDWORKS simulation so let's do that now I'm gonna go to SOLIDWORKS I'm gonna draw a beam I've already got a simulation template you, you can uh, see another video of me on how to create that and you can also download this simula simulation template from GrabCAD if you're interested. So the, the convenient thing of starting with a good template is you only need to uh, start calculating. You don't need to set up all the units etc because that's already done in the template. So I'm going to create a beam of one meter length, so one meter. And then I'm going to use weldments to create the the beam itself, that's convenient because in that way SOLIDWORKS will already set up the SOLIDWORKS simulation with help of beam elements. 
So I've got the HE100A beam over here. If you don't have that, you should download more Weltman profiles in the task pane over here. And to do that, uh, look at something else on the internet. Uh, so for example, search Google for uh, download Weltman profiles and you will find uh, how to get all these extra profiles that you see over here. So I'm gonna use this beam and then I'm gonna save this file as part one and then start a simulation create a new simulation study a static study I'm gonna do and you need SOLIDWORKS simulation premium for this oh, sorry you need SOLIDWORKS premium for this to, to be able to perform this analysis that I'm gonna do over here so in the template I already had set up material and then SOLIDWORKS simulation will take that into account as well so if you're not using this template but your own template you should probably provide material to this beam I don't have to do that in this case I'm gonna create fixtures so I'm gonna fix everything on this side so it cannot move and it cannot translate which corresponds to a cantilever beam and I'm gonna put a force on this point over here and then I'm gonna put it in this direction of a thousand Newton like that so it's uh, corresponding to 100 kilogram roughly and now I'm already set up to do the beam analysis so I can save the file and choose run and you see that beam analysis is very fast I already see the stress results and I want to see the moment diagram so I'm gonna define a beam diagram and then I want to see the moment around direction one or two that's a gamble let's have a look see direction two what happening I see very small values over here this is useless it's uh, as good as zero so I should take the other direction so at a definition I should have taken not direction two but direction one of course you can have moments in two direction for a beam and now I can see that the maximum moment is a thousand Newton over a meter which uh, is correct and I can also create a shear diagram uh, I think that should be direction 2 then I see a value of a thousand over here with the blue value is exactly a thousand so that's correct so uh, a thousand Newton as a shear force which is corresponding both these graphs to what I've shown here so constant shear force and a moment that is increasing to a thousand Newton meter so I've, I've checked that with help of SOLIDWORKS simulation now I can also check the uh, displacement, the maximum displacement. If you look for, you know, internet, you look for uh, uh, displacement in beams. You can find uh, tables that will show these. Uh, this maximum displacement can be calculated with these easy-to-use formulas. So I've done that. I filled out the values for this situation. This is the load. This is the length in millimeters. So whenever you're gonna calculate in millimeters you should do that consequently this is the mode of elasticity, mode of elasticity also in newton per millimeters uh, millimeter squared you can see the value over here and here you see the i value so the area moment of inertia for this beam and you can also check that with help of solidworks so going back and if i take the surface and then i choose tools evaluate and then section properties I can see the value here with a, a lot of precision and let me see that's exactly the value I have over there luckily and here you can also see it's around the y-axis and you see it's corresponding to here around the y-axis because around the other axis it will have a smaller moment of inertia around the z-axis for example and you can see that over here and also this value is also smaller so that's a, that's a good thing to check always so this is the value I should use the moment of inertia around the y-axis so I've done that over here it's exactly the same value and then I get a maximum displacement of 45 millimeters roughly so let's have a look at it go back to SOLIDWORKS simulation and look at the displacement and now I can see a couple of things first of all I see a round beam I can change that I can edit the definition and then 
uh, render beams profile so it looks more like the beam that I'm using and now I see another thing here the maximum displacement is a little larger than I've calculated I can switch it back here to numbers uh, by floating and then choose more precision I can see the displacement here is a little larger and that's because SOLIDWORKS simulation takes into account the shear effect that's a good thing but when you want to compare it to your the theoretical results then to get a 100% correspondence you should change this definition of this beam and then here change the shear factor to zero because simulation takes shearing from the beam into consideration as well but the standard formulas don't do that and for a short beam that makes quite a bit of difference so you shouldn't put this shear factor to zero but to be able to compare it to theoretical results then it's a good thing so I'm, I'm gonna rerun the study and I can see now that when I look at the displacement it's gotten a little bit less and it's corresponding locally exactly for 100% to my theoretical results that I have over here so that's a nice situation so then let's look at the stress as well you can calculate the maximum stress with the maximum moment times the y value so the the distance from the center to the outside is the y value divided by the i value that I've already previously shown how to calculate it with help of SOLIDWORKS and when you fill out the numbers in millimeters consistently again as I've done over here you get a maximum sh maximum stress in this case of 13.75 newton per square millimeter let's have a look at that then here I can also uh, choose render beam profile let me see where is it uh, I don't see it right now definition I oh, yeah, here it is right in front of me so here I've got uh, the maximum stress due to bending in this case and here also if I wanna look at the results in numbers I can just double click these values and choose floating over here and now I see my maximum stress is 13.75 exactly the same value as I've, I've got over here so whenever you use this exact value you get exact correct answers as well but make sure to not make any rounding errors over here and I've avoided that by using all seven of the relative digits over here so I can see that this value is exactly the same as this value and here you see pay attention a thousand newton over a meter is the same as uh, one million newtons over a millimeter it's the same moment it's a it's actually the same as that one meter is a thousand millimeters it's the same thing but it's, it's a bit harder to understand so whenever you want to be sure of that use for example a thing that I've put open over here search Google for convert moment meter millimeter and the first result will be quite useful for you you want to go from a thousand Newton over a meter to Newton per millimeter and Newton over a millimeter sorry and you see here that uh, that's a million so just to make sure it's always good to check your results double check it and a unit converter on internet is a good and fast way of doing that so luckily here again for stress I have exactly the same results so I can continue and present all my results so you can see the displacement has an accuracy of 100% my stress has an accuracy of 100% and my moments as well so it's nice to report so you don't need to give any explanation for uh, for example differences between theory and simulation and then as a final thing it's good to state that this beam can easily hold this force because the maximum stress is 13.75 newton per square millimeter the yield stress is uh, 220 newton per square millimeter so then it's good to state that your factor of safety in this case is 16 which means you could take 16,000 newton as a point load over a meter and then it would this beam would reach its yield point but not before that so that's a good uh, thing to state at the end of your calculation. So that was what I wanted to show here. Thanks for watching.